All right, after decades of serving families across America, honoring God in the process, establishing happy homes for children in need of adoption, Bethany Christian Services is now bowing down to the cultural winds, abandoning their biblical foundation. They announced that they will begin placing children in same-sex homes. Quote, We acknowledge that discussions about doctrine are important, but our sole job is to determine if a family can provide a safe, stable environment for children. Interesting. Well, joining me now to, uh, to talk about this, Rob Swartzwalder, Senior Lecturer of General Education at Regent University and someone who is very familiar with the services at Bethany Christian Services, or I should just say Bethany Services. Rob, welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to be with you, Tony. Thanks for having me. Well, Rob, you are familiar. Uh, as an adoptive parent, you're very familiar with uh, not only the work of adoption agencies, but Bethany in particular. Yeah, we adopted all three of our children through Bethany, and when we did that, they were wonderful to work with. They went out of their way to accommodate us financially. They were um, very professional and also very compassionate. So this decision on their part to essentially abandon the clear teaching of the Scripture on which they were founded concerning human sexuality and marriage is really a tragedy, uh, not just for children, but I think even more for those who, uh, those of us who are willing to stand for the Word of God as it clearly um, articulates human sexuality and um, don't want to compromise that. I, I, I want to, for just a moment, for just a moment, I want to put aside the theological, or as they refer to, doctrine issues here, and I, and I want to go back to their statement. And, and, and I just, for the benefit of our listeners, Rob Swartzwalder, while he's at uh, Regent University, used to be a senior vice president here at FRC at, in our policy shop before going to Regent. I want to go back to, the, to this quote. We acknowledge that discussion about doctrine are important, but our sole job is to determine if a family can provide a safe, stable environment for children. Okay, so put aside the doctrine aspect of this for a moment. Rob, when you look at the social science, uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a stable environment when you're talking about putting children in same-sex homes. Now, I, I know there's, there's anomalies, and there'll, there'll be some. You could probably point to one or two examples. But the social science makes very clear that the stability for children come when they have a mom and a dad that are married. There's no question, Tony, that the social science research demonstrate that children benefit most from not just having two adults, but from having a female mom and a male dad. Children need the complementary, complementary relationship that a, a mother and a father have. Um, Dr. Paul Sullins, uh, formerly of Catholic University, filed an amicus brief in the Obergefell case uh, several years ago when, uh, on behalf of FRC, and he documented copiously the benefits of having a mom and a dad. Now, many um, same-sex couples I'm sure they mean well and they uh, love their children, but we have to look not at the needs or the wants or the demands of adults, but what are the best interests of the children. And the children are benefited most when they're raised in a loving home with a mom and a dad. That's not just a Christian perspective. That's been documented from A to Z all across the literature. So we're turning a blind eye to that if we pretend Having both a mom and a dad doesn't matter. I want to go to something else they said. To, basically, following along those lines, you know, they say, yeah, okay, that might be true, but the need is so great. And so they actually said the need is great, so we are taking an all-hands-on-deck approach, meaning the situation is so dire. We've got, uh, we just got to place kids wherever we can find a home for them. And I guess, Rob, my question would be, you know, could it be that the need is great because as a society and as a nation, we've moved further and further away from God's design for marriage and family? And if that is the case, and I, I clearly believe the evidence suggests that is true, would not accommodating this view of human sexuality that the Scripture itself calls an abomination only exacerbate the, this, this crisis? Well, you know, Tony, one thing that needs to be clarified is they say they want to take an all-hands-on-deck approach. The reality is 
6% of married women between the ages of 15 and 44 cannot conceive. If you look at the data, that is millions of women. It's estimated by the National um, uh, Institutes of Health that one in seven couples have difficulty conceiving. And another statistic that I read indicates as many as two million couples in the United States want to adopt. There is no shortage of the number of people who want to adopt young children. And the reality is because we, as you just pointed out, have moved away from the biblical understanding and, frankly, just the normal, natural understanding of the value of children, we now have an abortion culture in which, as you know very well, somewhere around eight to 900,000 children are aborted every year. That's probably a low estimate. We also have a culture in which, in some ethnic groups, the number of abortions actually exceeds the number of live births. The upshot of it is, it's not about all hands. It's not about desperately trying to find families. When we adopted our children, we were only one of many couples who were trying to adopt. The, the birth mothers who so kindly and, and graciously entrusted their children to us had their pick of many couples on the list. That hasn't changed. So for them to say, well, we're desperate or whatever, that is simply factually inaccurate. I don't know where that comes from. And I think it points to what you have noted, that in a desperate effort to move away and to, to accommodate, I should say, a culture that is jettisoning family as God designed it, tragically, Bethany has now adopted this, we have to be liked, we can't be criticized. We're more concerned with the editorial page of the New York Times than we are with standing for truth and doing the best we can for these children. Uh, Rob Schwartzwalder, th this is a, a, a pattern that we've been watching over the last decade because of that external pressure of the you know, LGBT community. I mean, we, we had a shooting here. We had an LGBT uh, mm -hmm. Q activists come in here uh, designed with the intent of killing as many people as he could. And as you know, he shot one of our people here. And, uh, and of course, that's, that's one aspect. It, it probably what gets more people is not the fear of being physically attacked. It's the social media post. It's, the, as you pointed out, the editorials, mm -hmm. the headlines. But at what point does a Christian ministry no longer... Is it no longer a Christian ministry? Well, I, you know, Tony, you quoted them saying, um, talking about, well, doctrine is important. This is not a difference between whether you baptize using uh, running water or still water or something minor like that. This goes to the heart of who God made us. He made us male and female. That's what Jesus affirmed. That's what God said in his word in Genesis. There are two genders, two complementary genders, complementary in every way. Human biology itself teaches us that God designed the family to be led by a mom and a dad. If we move away from that as professing Christians, we are jettisoning. We're turning away from the clearly revealed word of God. How can people claim to be followers of Jesus, claim to say that he is their Lord, when despite what his word explicitly and repeatedly says, they turn their backs on that, and in the name of some, whatever it might be, misguided compassion, moral cowardice, whatever else, and instead walk right into the trap that the world and the enemy himself have set for them, Jesus said, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. My fear for Bethany and for groups like this is they have written, in essence, Ichabod over their own ministries. And you and I both know that means the glory of God has departed. Yeah. They have turned their backs on the Lord, and they are going to suffer the consequences for that, sadly. You know, as a as a Christian ministry, as you as you set out to be a Christian ministry, is that's what you claim to be. You, you, the Lord's going to hold you to a different standard standard than a secular, because a secular is not claiming the presence of God or the favor of God. As we read in the Old Testament with Israel, as long as they had the favor of God, they were in good shape. 
But when God removed his favor mm-hmm. because of their disobedience and their rejection of his truth, the wheels began to come off. And, and, I, and I've seen mm-hmm. that with other ministries that have uh, jettisoned biblical truth. But as you point out, Rob, the Scripture is very clear. These are not things that, like you say, they're not these, these uh, finer points that you, you, know, you debate because they're not really clear, whether it's pre-tribulation, mid-trib, post-trib. Right. You, know, you can make arguments for that. Um, and I'm going to get all kinds of emails about that. People are going to tell me which one's the, the right <laughs> one. But, but the scripture is, scripture is very clear, as you said, on gender. It's not, it's not even a question. Yep. It's, it's both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Marriage, it's not, it's not, even, it's not even in question. It's, it's in the Old Testament and it's <laughs> in the New Testament. Is this why Christianity... And I would use the term orthodox from a standpoint of authentic, orthodox, orthopraxy, mm-hmm. following Scripture as it is written. Um, is that why Christianity is under such attack today, because it stands in the way of what the left ultimately wants to do? That's, I think that's a huge part of it. We have the Word of God, which tells us what we say yes to and what we say no to. The way that God created human sexuality is good. It isn't narrow. It isn't cruel. He has given us the gift of covenant marriage so that we can rejoice in a lifelong partnership. That's a wonderful, joyful thing. You and I have both been married a long time. The Lord has blessed our marriages as we have stayed faithful to Him and to our spouses. That's part of the beauty of the humanity in which God created us. And as people look at those kinds of relationships, I hope they find meaning and attractiveness to them, but the world system continually calls people to a different form of life. Jesus said of Satan, he is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. And the lie that you can be sexually fulfilled by going against God's standards is pervasive. It's right. everywhere. We, we see this, the advent of... I read a few years ago there were 20,000 new pornography sites annually. I'm sure it's more than that now. Um, This is a devastating attack. And I think the whole issue of the distortion of human sexuality is one of the principal ways that the Church is being undermined. We, And I would say, too, Tony, that too often times we accept the criticism we receive too freely. Now, when that criticism is legitimate, we have to take it. But too often, when we hear, oh, you're homophobic, you're a bigot, you are a hater, some of us are too willing to say, oh, that's true, I'm so sorry. Well, if there has been unkindness and cruelty, of course we need to repent of that. But standing for the truth of the Word of God is a loving thing to do. Right, across the board. Uncompromising, unashamed, across the board, whatever it might be. Right. And when we begin to... You know, you can't kick the leg out of a stool and expect the other three legs to hold it up. At some point, the whole thing is going to collapse. You either stand for the basic truth of the Word of God, or you don't. You can't cut the Lordship of Jesus in half. And if we're going to be faithful to Him, we have to be completely faithful. All right. Christianity is not a uh, smorgasbord. You can't pick... uh... Right. You can't pick just a few things here and there and skip the, uh, the veggies and go to for the dessert. Um, Rob Swartzwalter, as always, great to have you on. Thanks so much for, uh, for, for sharing your thoughts on, on this with us today. Thank you, Tony. My pleasure. All right. Rob Swartzwalter, Regent University, and a, uh, a father who's adopted three children.